Hello friend, welcome back. Um, in this quick video, I am gonna share with you how I'm going to be processing our corn. Um, this is not corn that I have grown, but just purchased. It is summertime, obviously, and it one of the, my favorite things to eat is corn along with watermelon. And so what I wanna be able to do is take advantage of the really good sales and pick up some corn that we can enjoy in the winter months when obviously corn is not in season now. I'm not, I don't have enough to can the corn, which is totally fine. What I'm gonna do is freeze it. My goal for this summer is to process in various ways all of the fresh produce that we can get during the summertime like strawberries blueberries raspberries blackberries all those various things along with the summer vegetables the ones that will work i'll either be freezing them canning them i'm hoping down the road to have a freeze dryer so i can freeze dry some of the food as well though that is not quite a possibility just yet so I am going to show you how I'm going to do this. I've never done corn this way before. Typically when I have had fresh corn, I will shuck it, parboil it, and then allow it to uh, dry and then freeze individually and then put it in a bag in the freezer. However, it always just tastes like well, frozen corn and so no different than what you get at the store. This time around, I've been seeing another trick that is if you cut the ends off and you take a few layers of the outer um, husk off of the corn and freeze it this way, that you should be able to pull it straight from the freezer and cook it, whether you boil it, grill it, or whatever, and it'll taste just as fresh. I'm not sure if this is true or not, but we're gonna try it this year and find out. Since I've done it the other way before, I'm gonna do it that way. I've got 20 ears of corn. For us, I'm going to be packaging packaging excuse me these up into four per serving um, only three out of the four of us eat corn so for each meal that at least give us all except for one a, you know corn on the cob and then it just leaves an extra for leftovers which works for us because it's usually me that eats it I love corn it grew up um, eating corn every single um, fall when it was ready and so and in the summertime as well and so it's just one of my favorite things. So let's just get going and I'll show you how quickly we're gonna get all of this processed and then I'll be able to put all this into the freezer. So. Okay, so what I've got is I've got my 20 ears of corn. I've got just the grocery bags that I had them in. That's just where I'm gonna stick what I don't need to keep. Um, I am, let's just try this way. I'll pull off a couple. And honestly, I don't know how many, I feel like just a, just a couple of the outer ones like this. And I feel like that's good because it's got a nice tight seal on it. I'm just gonna cut a little bit of the tip off. Again, I've been see seeing this float around in all kinds of canning groups. Um, one of these days, I'm going to remember to do this step before I hit record on the camera. It just helps my cutting board to not slide around. I've got to get a, a thicker one so it doesn't do that. Um, but I've seen this in a lot of the canning groups on Facebook of people storing corn in the freezer this way. And this is pretty much it. We're just going to cut it, cut off a little bit of the top, a little bit of the bottom. Now, I always check my corn before I buy it to make sure just by peeling it back a little bit like this, making sure that there's no worms in it. And what I'm also looking for when I pick my corn is how tiny are the kernels? I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but if they're nice and small, for me, that tells me that the corn is very tender. And so that's what I'm looking for. I feel like I learned growing up that the bigger the kernel, the tougher the corn is, it's not as tender um, as it could be. And so I always look for the smallest kernels, obviously ones that don't, you know, have any worms in them because that can happen no matter where you're buying it from. So, all right, I'm gonna get all of this processed and then I'll show you how I'm gonna be storing it in the freezer.
Okay, that is it. I've got all 20 ears done. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in a vacuum seal bag and get um, them into the freezer so they'll be good to go. Now I do intend to get more corn. Um, I like to try to get it from our, a local farmer's market, but sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. They are a local family, and so they're not always open depending on what's going on. Um, so our Publix has had Florida fresh corn um, for five or two dollars, which is a fantastic deal. And so, and given that we live in Florida, means that the corn doesn't travel as far, which is great. And it has been so good this year. So I do intend to purchase more. And for the and I'm gonna process some additional corn in a different way that I can pull out for soups or to have as a side dish. But for now, I'm just gonna do corn on the cob. So I'm going to get um, my little cryovac machine. What I can do is I will link um, down below in the description box to the one that I use. These are phenomenal, and it actually was from another channel that I was watching. Um, Oh my gosh, their name all of a sudden escaped my mind. I will link them below so you can check them out as well. My brain just stopped working and I can't remember the name of their channel. But they take their cryo back and then they repackage any frozen um, like veggies or fruit or anything like that to seal out anything that would cause any freezer burn that would happen if you just left it in its original package and after watching them do that it's like a light bulb went off duh that would make sense you know because one of the issues we have is if we bulk buy things can get freezer burn on them they're not as fresh and they're not as good so my husband had one and so i borrowed it and have never given it back and so i use it i have different size bags um my dad actually sent me some really big bags. These are 11 by 16, which should be more than enough for the corn. So we're going to try these out today. You can get the bags in all different kinds of sizes. Again, I'll link down below what I have and what I use. I will never recommend a product that I don't personally use in my kitchen. All of that being said, if you don't have a vacuum sealer, you can get them at a really reasonable price. You can also pay a pretty penny for some of them, but this one is really reasonable and it is amazing. Um, I a lot of times like to sm smoke a pork butt. Problem I always had in the past is when I would shred it and I try to freeze it and pull it out of the freezer, it just doesn't taste as good as it was the day up. But when I started using the vacuum sealer on it, it tastes like it did when I pulled it right off of the smoker. And so these really do work really well for keeping your food fresh. And so I would highly recommend, especially in today's economy, as prices, as everyone knows, are skyrocketing. They're constantly going up. We're all looking at ways to save money. This is one way to do it. It's a little bit of an investment, but the return on it is so worth it because if you can find the deals and buy those things when they're on sale and then you can repackage them and vacuum seal them, it will allow your food to last a lot longer, which means you're not gonna have any waste. And nowadays that's so important. So anyways, I'll stop talking and let's get to vacuum sealing all of this corn to get this project done. Okay, so I've got my machine and I have my bags. The nice thing about these bags is they're already sealed on one side. And so, but if you buy it by the roll, you can really truly make them whatever size that you want. I just like the pre, pre-sized ones um, that are already, you know, various sizes. That, that doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, my brain just doot, stopped working again. Um, just because this is just easier and more convenient for me, but if you don't mind sizing your own bags, that's also an option as well. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put four per package and these bags are definitely more than enough, but I'm going to use them and it'll be just fine. And the other thing you can do too is say you only have this size bag you can also cut off some extra if you want and then just seal it there we're just going to test it out here and see i'm going to set it to normal and then i'm going to set it to food to dry because again while there's some natural moisture in here we haven't cooked anything so we're just going to vacuum seal and it does get loud so i'll be back in a moment because this part will be muted okay so you can see there's nothing happening 
that just means it's either not closed or you're not lining it up correctly inside, which can happen easily. So it's kind of, let's see if I can turn it so you guys can see a little bit. Lining it up in the center right here. So that way you're gonna take it and you're gonna close it and you wanna snap it and then try again. Okay, so when your vacuum sealer's done, it'll say seal. You wait till that light goes off, lift it up, and then you're sealed. And you can see how it sucked all the air out and around the corn, and this is gonna help keep this fresh corn fresh in the freezer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this the same for all of them. Now what I am trying to do is I'm trying to kind of, not that this totally matters, this is just a personal preference. I am trying to center the corn a little bit into the middle of the bag, just so that way as it sucks the air, it can go around the corn and get really nice and snug. Okay, and that is it. Now I have five packages of fresh corn on the cob. There's four ears in each again. This is plenty for each meal for my family. We're only a family of four that are still at home and one doesn't eat corn, nothing more than she's just not a big fan of it. So that's perfectly fine because I love it and I'll take care of it for her. So again, I have never done this before like this, but I definitely wanted to give it a try. There's so many different ways that you can process things that are currently in season. And I think it's so critical right now in particular that we take advantage of the sales and the things, whether we're growing them or not. Like obviously I'm growing some things. I can't grow corn where I'm at. I'm only doing a vertical garden. Um, I have green stalks and so I am doing my gardening that way and probably could grow corn in it, but not enough to make it worth it. I'd rather really utilize those green stalks for tomatoes and peppers, green beans, cucumbers, things like that. And so anyways, so um, this is really quick and easy. You can see all of well, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. The video is probably not gonna be quite that long for you guys, but that's all it took. And now I have five meals worth of corn, which doesn't seem like much, but can keep in mind that this is not gonna be used until the fall or winter because corn is gonna be in season throughout the summer. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and use it a lot in our meal planning. I think I drive my family probably crazy with the amount of fresh corn that I cook in the summertime, but it really is one of my favorite things to enjoy. And so whether it's nostalgia or not, I just really love it because that's where I grew up in Wisconsin. And when it was corn season, there were corn stands outside of the fields that we would just go pick up a dozen ears and that's all we would have for dinner. And it was so good. So one of my favorites. So anyways, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Another really quick video, but I just want to keep them quick and simple and easy for you guys to watch, easy for me to make. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye.